great people. This system here that we've got here has been modelled after great people. It's not what the situation is, it's what you make of the situation. There are certain things that we can control within ourselves, yet there are certain things that we can't control. And these are called situations. Although we can't control these situations, we can control what they mean to us. We can't control, I'll let that answer that again. We can't control the situation, but we can control what they mean. That's the most important thing. This is the NLP model. Looks a bit complex there, doesn't it? This is everybody, this is by the way. Everybody interprets situations through their own perceptions, their white person, their own reality, which we talked about. When we see something, see something, yeah, this is what happens, it goes into, yeah, our filter there. Once it filters, I'll send you this by the way. You delete, distort and generalize. Every bit of information you get or see in the world. You know when someone mentions Coventry and you've been at Coventry and you've had a fight. You think about that thing straight away. Well, some of the other person may have had a phenomenal experience up there with a female or something like that. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah? So if I'm talking about Coventry, on the other hand, yeah, somebody who's about enough to find out Coventry, which to me is not a good place. Coventry's where I took my mum and where she died on the operating table. So that's my representation of when I drive up Coventry, because we had to drive up there and right on that when they calls in the hospital and says, Mum's, uh, so she's, uh, she's not welcome to hospital. And we got there, found out she was dead. So Coventry to me is something else. You see what I'm saying to you? So uh, I've got friends and family over there, but when I drive up there, that's the first thing that comes to me. It's driving up there because, because that's my representational experience and memory. So you would generalize whatever you hear from me, and you would generalize, delete. We are deletion creatures. We delete information before we run out, before we, we'll, we'll, we'll automatically, you think about it, you've already thought about, oh, they're not gonna take me on. You've already thought about it, I better tell them now. You're already deleting stuff. We delete stuff that we put memories together. Oh, that's gonna happen. A female suffering from a phobia, ask her to close the window. What, she, what does she see? She generalizes, deletes and distorts. She sees herself falling down out of the window because she's got a phobia of heights. She can't shut the window. She's got a phobia of heights. So she can't shut the window. As soon as she walks near the window, guess what happens when you've got a phobia? Uh, guess what happens? She panics. Panics, vomit, what else? Sweating profusely, yeah. yeah. Hands tension. Everyone's different, yeah. You ask me to shut the window. I shut the door any time all day long, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just give me extra pay raise. That's all. <laughs> but in terms of in terms of what we experience, yeah. Look, external representation, external event, generalize, delete, distort. This we have. 800 million bits of information traveling through our mind constantly. That's like giving you 100, 100 every second, giving you 134 toothbrushes. What can you do with that? So you know your brain is constantly, it's amazing the brain is, it's constantly handling that information. It's like me giving you, every second I'm giving you 130 toothbrushes. What can your brain do with that? <laughs> so that's what your brain's doing. So it's working fast. So what you do is you generalize, because you can't handle the information, you will generalize, delete, distort, distort it. Once it's distorted, and you'll use these filters, memories, experience, for me, I gave you a mixture, a male and a female, I gave you another mixture of family, yeah? I gave you another mixture of someone being violent, yeah? So there's different mixtures of emotions running through there. Mom definitely comes in it for me, Coventry now. Then you internally represent the information, this happens very quickly. 
that gives you a state of physiology. That's what's going on in your brain. So once you've, in, once you've filtered all of it down to that, do you remember when you were saying to me before, you were saying that somebody told me this and somebody told me that? Mm -hmm. Your internal representation, decisions, what people have told you, language, values, which someone was putting into you by telling you what you needed to know. Yeah, that was all. That was all. That someone's told me this. Someone's told me that. Yeah. Someone's told me this is wrong with me. Someone's told me that. Do you know? Do you know when I go into what you're doing, it's part yeah. of it, that is, yeah. But what I'm trying to say to you is that's how you filtering. Yeah. About recognizing the filtering. That filtering was caused. That filtering caused. Yeah. A internal representation from the external event of what someone told you. Did generalize, delete, distort, and then that caused your state. So your state would be. When I say state, you'll either get put you into a, when you come and stand up here, I say stand up here, what up, what did you do the week? You went into a positive straight yeah. straight away? Yeah. yeah. Caused your state because I interlinked your you to the memory of standing there and speaking. Yeah. Which is when you felt confident. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So that's where I interlinked. Now then after that we have physiology. Mm -hmm. Now what what I'm saying here is this is how you do it and the submodalities can change it. Mm -hmm. But when you do this naturally, because it's going on an unconscious level, it's an unconscious thought process. This is what's happening here. Yet, you come into here, internal representation, state, physiology. You can change the way you feel by changing your physiology.